Hello there guys, today I'm going to do a DIY video for you. Um, and this DIY is something I come up with a little project, uh, come up with a little project myself. Um, it involves a air conditioning unit and a thermostat, two relays, and a battery. Now, many of you may know that whenever you buy these window units, most of them are plain and simple and don't really offer much features, such as they only run like on a simple mechanical knob. They don't run on it, but it's controlled, is what I meant to say, by a simple mechanical knob and an old st um, style um, thermostat, which is filled with a Freon inside, which I don't have it with me in the moment. Um, and whenever the temperature outside gets hot, the gas expands, and then triggering it, uh, the uh, contactor inside of it and cutting on the compressor. But, whenever it gets cool in the room, it shuts the compressor off, but the fan keeps running. And I know that may get a little annoying sometimes because you want the system to shut off, you know, completely whenever it's done and not keep using power and being inefficient. So, I figured out a way to jerry-rig a normal household HVAC thermostat up to one of these little guys. And I'm going to show it with you. My little, or I'm going to show this little project on how to do that. First off, it's important that if you you need to have a little experience with this type of stuff. If you if you're a starters or new to this, it's not advised that you try this. Although you can, but do it at your own risk. Um, I will not be liable for any um, damages or injuries caused by negligence or inexperienced users trying to uh, copy this experiment or project. So first things first, always know where your wires are and which you know devices they go to and what they control. For example, um, of course this is a window unit, this is a 5000 BTU window unit. Um, I've got for uh, experimental purposes um, but I noticed on the inside it has a nice little schematic right above the uh, condenser coil where the fan guard is as you can see it tells you fan motor you know this is the fan but it's the motor this is the compressor motor and it tells you the uh, wire colors black blue there's the capacitor there's the plug or power input Right there, as you can see, my camera would focus for you guys. And then there's, of course, the control knob, but and then the uh, thermostat, which is right there. And of course, as you can see, most of these are usually a two-speed blower or three-speed uh, fan um, in these. And of course, you got your compressor here, which is a single speed. But as you know, your compressor has three. Um, wires that come out and the fan has about four or five wires depending on the model and how many speeds it has some of them can have as many as six wires i even seen with some with eight wires but anyway the um which is going to need is going to need two relays one high powered relay uh, i estimate at least maybe 20 amps because this even though these only use about 4 amps at maximum, they only use about 2 amps, uh, two, 2 to 2.5 amps continuing under normal conditions when the room's about 70 degrees or so, depending on how cold you want the room to get. But the colder the room, the less power this uses, if you uh, just want to know a little tip. But under startup, this compressor is going to pull about up to 25 amps to start up. That's a lot of power for such a little device. It looks big, but it's actually not. It's only like a small little motor inside, a little two, three, or four hundred watt motor. But um, depending on your model, uh, like I said, this is a five thousand BTU unit, and this pulls about twenty two amps. What uh, exactly what I use? I measured with my uh, uh, amp meter. Uh, so I've tried that multiple times to uh, see the maximum amp draw 
just for specification so you guys can select the right relay for this project. And then the next relay will be a normal, like a small 3, 4, 5 amp relay. That's going to be for your blower. Because your blower is only going to pull maybe half an amp at the most. This one, for instance, pulls 300 milliamps um, at high when it's on the highest setting. So that's very uh, energy efficient for this uh for that size anyway as you can see it's a pretty decent size little uh, blower motor but it doesn't use that much power but anyway now what you're going to do is you're going to take one terminal of each relay you're going to wind the connect those two together you're going to jump them together or you can jump them or use like a wire nuts you know and just twist them together and then run another wire to a power source, which is usually 12 volts DC, which is I'm using. You can use a 24 volt AC system or a power input or from a little 12 volt, you know, adapter. It doesn't matter to me. I gotta put my little fan uh, control wire back in here. It fell out. But um, anyway, you connect the two, those two to negative. For example, you can do it negative, positive, or negative, but just for to make this a little bit easier and understandable, you're just going to connect two of them to negative, and then you're going to take the other lead to each of them, for example, which is then this black one, that's this black one right here, the small one. This one right here, the yellow one, like is connected to my negative side of my battery, and then this other one, this black one, you're going to connect it to the Y terminal of the thermostat. See the Y right there? You're going to connect that to the Y. That's going to be your compressor um, control or your compressor relay. Then you're going to take the fan relay, the other terminal of that one, and you're going to stick it to RC. Okay, after you do that, you're going to take G and connect it to the positive of the battery. If you're just if you just want to copy what I'm doing, I'm just that's why I'm saying hook it to the positive. Like I said, you can hook it however you want to. So, you can hook it to the positive of the battery. This is what you're going to do if you're if you're copying the same one I am, the same setup. Okay? Then once that, you're going to take the line connections of the compressor, once you hook up the capacitor to the compressor, and like I said, you can only even have to actually, when you're taking this apart, you don't even have to take off these connections. But if you do, it's important to read your schematic to connect, make all the connections back to factory default, uh, which is where they were. Okay, now you're gonna, like I said, once you hook up the compressor to the capacitor and to neutral, then you're going to take line, connect one end to one terminal of the relay, and connect it to, or, sorry, one terminal of the line from the uh, compressor, and you're going to hook it to the relay. Then you're going to do the same thing with the fan on this relay. Then you're going to take the other side of the relay and connect it to straight into your power source where the power is coming into line. You can hook that here. Now if you want to do what I did is I took a jumper and jumped it to the fan side over here so I don't have to run two wires and have to do any use any wire nuts or anything. I just took a double, you know, a split uh, wire here where it has two spay terminals. And so I hooked it to here and then take the line of the fan which goes up in through here as you can see the white which is the white wire here and it goes into the fan that's going to cut your fan on now this may look very complicated but now i am going to try to show you a schematic that i drew up okay here's the schematic kind of sloppy but um, as you can see here you're going to have the line side going through the one end of the relay out the other and then you're going to take of the fan the same thing of the line side but this is low on the fan and then see I got a high here but these, this is neutral this goes with the capacitor etc uh, but you can also if you want to you can actually take these two here and jump them together so you don't have to wire up two little um, 
two individual wires and you can just jump them together which is what I've done here now if you want to run this on a more bigger advanced system or a system that has um, two motors like for example one for the uh, condenser and one for the evaporator indoor outdoor motor then you're gonna have to connect one wire to the O which is outdoor fan it's kind of ironic because outdoor and O but um that's what the O is for. It's for outdoor fan. And if you have a system with heat, you're going to hook it up to RH and auxiliary 1 or W. Uh, now, these, this thermostat here has three heat systems. It has a heat pump, auxiliary 1, auxiliary 2. So, um, this is a dual thermostat. Like I said, this is a Z-Wave. This is probably like a $100 thermostat I picked up at the thrift store for about a buck. Uh, a couple years back, and I ain't nothing to do with it, so I just come up with this little project idea. Um, so, this is my idea. I just wanted to share it. And so now we're going to put it to the test. Make sure power is on. Okay, power is on. And now we're going to give it a go. This is the fan at first. Alright, three, two, one. See everything is going uh, is, is good. So now let's take this and we're gonna cut the compressor on now. And here we go. As you can see, our system is running nice, and uh, everything seems to be working out. You can see some frost building up on the coils. There's indication that it's working. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'll try to make uh, more videos like this in the future. And come, uh, in the near future, that is. So, uh, just stay tuned and um, leave a like. And if you have any questions about the wire, uh, connection terminals or wiring anything up, just leave a comment in the comments below. And I'll try to respond ASAP. Uh, other than that, have a good day.